Jonathan Silva here, back with another video, taking a look at how we can use Power Automate in our lives to help us with any business decision that we need to make to, to really automate any of those manual repetitive processes. Today, our video is centered around the integration of Power Automate, SharePoint, and Power BI. Now, what I'd like to do is just jump right into my use case here, explain it by showing, and then go build a Power Automate flow to help solve my problem. So what I have here is a Power BI report that I've created, which is a pretty basic report here that I did. It took me about 10 minutes to put together just to showcase some data here. And what I have is just some dummy data around, you know, superheroes and some of the purchases they make from my fictitious company to help them in whatever task they have. And the idea behind this report in Power BI is to give me a little bit more information about what, pro what products they're purchasing most, which superhero team is purchasing what, and you know, get averages, get totals, get goals, all that kind of good stuff, the amazing things that Power BI can offer us with these visuals. Now, here's the thing that I, I'm most importantly thinking about, right? Is every week I get more and more data, okay? About these sales or I'm selling to a new superhero team and all that kind of goes into it. And what I like to do is automate a process that allows me to take email attachments that come in that has all the data stored in it and then take that email attachment, store it in like a, in a nice location for me to use as my data source for this Power BI file. So all I need to do is with this Power BI report is set up a scheduled refresh or do a manual refresh it once a week, twice a week, whatever it might be, to be able to always have the most up-to-date data without me having to go in and reevaluate, to move data around, to really to continue to go through the process each time. What I really want to do is automate everything here. So all I need to do is click one button or set up that schedule refresh and I will always have the most update data possible. That is exactly what we want. So let's go do it. So really quick, taking a look at my data here, one of the things to notice about this data is I'm actually pointing to a SharePoint document library, my training site. And what I've done is as I brought the data in from that document library, that training site that I have, is I'm using that site, and you can see here's our superhero orders right here, I'm using this site as the source and I'm combining all these files together into one table inside of Power BI to be able to have all those columns all together. Now, if you're interested in learning about that process and how to use the from folder option, either on premises or from SharePoint within Power BI, I do have another video perfectly set up just for that, that I would encourage you taking a look at. There is a link inside of our little description here for this video, just right there. But for here, we have our data all set up in here. What I wanna do is set up a flow that is triggered every time I get that email with that document, and then take that document, create a file here, so then I can go straight to Power BI and have it completely updated because I've already set up in Power Query that I wanna combine all these files together. So without further ado, let's get into Power Automate and start setting up our flow to design the process. So I'm gonna jump into Power Automate here, get myself out of the way so you're not seeing me in the way, and then let's go ahead and create a new flow. So we're gonna select the Create option from our navigation pane in the left, and we're gonna choose an automated cloud flow. In this case, our trigger is gonna be when a new email arrives in our inbox. So for this one, is we're gonna put um, Save Email Attachments, to SharePoint to update Power BI. Now, very long name in that case, but it tells exactly what we wanna do. When a new email arrives is what we're looking for. Of course, an Office 365 Outlook. We're gonna go ahead and create that. And now when we're looking at our inbox here for when a new email arrives, what we really wanna make sure we're doing is setting it up so we're gonna filter down to the specific option that we want, right? I don't wanna add every attachment from every person that sends me something to that SharePoint site. So I wanna make sure I'm putting in a filter here. So first things first, we're definitely gonna include attachments. 
we are only always going to have only attachments as well and we'll do a subject filter here for the email superhero order okay so it's just a new superhero order not the great greatest one here but we're just going to run with it now we can hit new step and the next step that we want to do is go ahead and get the attachment from the email so we're going to go ahead and search get attachment and we're going to go and do that from office 365 outlook okay so here it is get attachment from our email and now for our attachment here the message id is going to be from the email that triggered off our flow so when a new email arrives that is the message id that we want to point to so let's go find that in our dynamic content and then the attachment id okay in this case is going to be our attachments Okay, so we're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna keep going. Let's make sure we get the right one. Okay, attachments, con attachments, attachment ID. There it is. It always comes in twice. And notice the moment we do that, we are getting an apply to each loop being applied here. That's simply because we may have multiple attachments. You can see that that's the plural S version of the word attachment. So that means for each attachment that comes in, this process will be done for every single one of them. So even if I get three or four come in as uh, an email that one time, it'll create three or four files, depending upon how many we get. So now that we're getting that attachment, okay, the next action that I wanna do is go ahead and create that file in SharePoint. So you can go ahead and search for SharePoint. And again, we want to create the file, right? We wanna create that file that's stored just like this, so we're gonna go ahead and find create file. And it looks like it went right past it. So there it is, create file. And now we just have to point to where we wanna store this new file. So I'm gonna go ahead and point to my site, my training site, my folder path in this case, okay, the folder that I wanna to point to, so I can just go ahead and find the document library here, superhero order data. The file name, okay, in this case, the file name that I'm gonna choose is the name of the file of the, of the attachment itself. I'm just gonna use the exact same one that came in. Okay, and the file content, again, we're gonna choose the content of that file from the trigger. Whenever, whatever came in from that, that email, we're gonna use that. And then that's it. That's it, that's the whole flow. That's everything we want to take that email attachment, place it into our document library. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And the next step is let's see it work. Let's see it run and go through that whole process. So I'm gonna make sure that I can send myself an email and I have my email all ready to go over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and send myself an email. And I'm gonna make sure I put in super hero order. Okay, make sure I don't have any extra signatures or attachments on here because that will come in as an attachment that we have. We're gonna go ahead and attach a file and I'm gonna go ahead and drag it over from over here. There it is. This one's gonna be all about the Avengers and their orders and we can go ahead and test it. Now, obviously we could just run it and it should work as well, but I always like to go ahead and do a test every time I first create a flow, just to make sure everything's working just right, to make sure I know it's running and all that good stuff. Okay, there it is. And now we can go ahead and hit send. And now I should be getting an email at any moment here. And it looks like I just got my email. You can see it, there it is, my superhero order. Let's take a look at our flow if it continues to come through. And our flow has run successfully. So if we come over to our SharePoint site here and refresh there, you see our newest one. We have it in there, Avengers orders just a few seconds ago. So our very last step to test this out to make sure it works is we are going to refresh our Power BI report and we will be able to see the newest data in here. We should have another option here with our slicer to see our logo of the Avengers and that team should be placed in inside of our matrix on the left. So we're gonna go ahead and hit refresh.
And there we have it. Our new piece of data has come in. We have all of it. There it is, there's our Avengers. You can see it's come up in my slicer. I have it inside of every one of the visuals here. It's been added to the data. I have my measures all organized with it as well. Everything's ready to go, right? So we've been able to go through, take that email attachment, send it into SharePoint, which is being used as the source of my Power BI report. Being able to use a, that SharePoint document library means I can combine all those files together. And once I combine all those files together inside of Power Query for Power BI, I can have them all stored here in one single table. All I did was update that table. It's gone through every little step inside of Power Query to get to this point. And I now have my newest updated version of the data. Right? If I wanna get this even further, I can publish this out to the Power BI service, set up a scheduled refresh on it, refresh it four, five, six times a day in the middle of the night, however I need, so that no matter when I get those emails coming in, it'll always just have that schedule set up and I can always make sure I have that up to date version of the data. My Power BI port, Power BI report is ready to go and we're sitting pretty, right? No longer are we going through taking that email attachment and manually adding it in, doing all those repetitive actions. We are using Power Automate to do that for us. Well, thanks for joining me again here as we take a look at how we can use Power Automate to benefit our lives, to benefit our jobs, make ourselves more productive. And here we saw the integration of Power Automate, Power BI, the Power Platform itself. It's just a beautiful thing. Stay tuned for some future videos as we continue to look at how to integrate the Power Platform together. And don't remember, or don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button below. Make sure you're getting all the latest content from myself and all of us here at Pragmatic Works. Bye now.